This is Veronica Hicks with some more pre-coronation information, part of a series of broadcasts covering as many aspects of the preparations as there is time for. Today, I'm looking at the royal image. The late Queen was perhaps the most widely known and recognised face of anyone in the world and for such a long time. Her coronation in 1953 was witnessed in the Abbey by more than 8,000 guests. The first to be televised, it was watched by 27 million people in the UK out of a population of 36 million. We're up to 70 now. But going back in history, most people never caught a glimpse of their monarch. Well, not until the 9th century, if they were in a position to handle money. The history of coins and kings goes back to that time. The very first coins were struck in the British Isles 2,000 years ago, copying Greek coin design. After the Romans invaded in AD 43, the Roman system was introduced. And then when they left in the 5th century, the silver penny eventually emerged as the dominant coin circulating in England. Fast forward to 800 AD, the year that Charlemagne was crowned emperor, and coins already bore the names of the kings for whom they were struck and a natural development was the representation of their own images on their coins. Coinage played a huge part in spreading the fame of kings. The more often the coins were passed through people's hands and the further afield they went, the more famous the monarch. Athelstan, who died in 939, is the first English king to be shown on his coins wearing a crown or a circlet. But for most people, the king's image on coins was the only likeness of the monarch which they were ever likely to see in their lifetimes, if they could get hold of a coin. After over a thousand years, the monarch continues to be depicted on the obverse of modern UK coinage. During her reign, there were five representations of Her Majesty on circulating coins. The original was adopted at the beginning of her reign in 1952. Then in 64, 85, 98, and the fifth and last portrait was introduced in 2015. It shows the elderly queen wearing the George IV diamond diadem that she wore on her way to the abbey to become queen, a diadem which incorporated the rose, the shamrock and the thistle in its design. From the time of Charles II onwards, a tradition developed of monarchs being represented on the coins facing in the opposite direction to their immediate predecessor. The exception to this was in the brief reign of Edward VIII. He preferred his left profile. So even though he should have been facing to the right, designs for proposed coins for his reign show Edward VIII facing left. But of course, he was only king for a matter of months before he abdicated for love, and he was never crowned. The right-left tradition was restored in the reign of his brother, George VI, who found himself unexpectedly acceding to the throne, with his portrait facing left, as if Edward VIII had faced right. Could this be more confusing? Nevertheless, the late Queen reassuringly faced right for all of her long reign, though left on postage stamps. So now, Charles III is facing left on coins and on the left and facing left on the new QR code stamps issued by the Royal Mail. He's bareheaded with a few visible waves in his hair and with his characteristic parting just slightly left of centre. Images of the monarch on banknotes are a much more recent invention. But only since 1960 has the British sovereign featured on every English banknote, giving the Queen another unique distinction among many other previous monarchs. The design of King Charles III's banknotes was unveiled in December. The King's portrait will appear on all four of our polymer banknotes, £5, £10, £20 and £50. The rest of the design on the banknotes will remain the same. The King's image will appear on the front of the banknotes on the right, as well as in the see-through security window on the left. However, these banknotes are not yet in circulation. There is also an official photograph of King Charles and the Queen Consort, because that is her title until she's crowned. It was taken in the Blue Room at Buckingham Palace just recently, and they're both wearing blue against a soft, focused background. 
The 74-year-old king, whose hair is now silvery white, is standing on the left of the photograph, looking outwards with a relaxed half-smile. He's wearing a blue pinstripe suit over a white shirt and blue tie with a thin yellow geometrical pattern. His right hand is characteristically half-submerged in the right-hand pocket of his jacket, his thumb fully visible. The Queen Consort, who is an inch or two shorter than her husband, has soft silver-blonde wavy hair grazing her neck. She's smiling warmly, her dark eyes shining, and she's wearing pearl earrings and a three-string pearl necklace fastened at the front with a blue clasp. Her dress is a vivid blue, or royal blue, similar in intensity to the blue of the boar on her coat of arms. Clothing psychologists suggest this is to show nobility, status and reassurance. Her below-the-knee-length dress is collarless. It has three-quarter-length sleeves and is fastened at the front. The royal feet are not visible in the photograph. Well, that is an official one, and there will be thousands of others. But I've already seen two commemorative tins of shortbread, a Scottish biscuit speciality for those who don't know that, with the king's image on the front, one in a highland two-piece grey jacket and waistcoat worn with his kilt, and the other in his red royal colonel's tunic, complete with the blue sash of the Order of the Garter, descending from his left shoulder across to his waist, and a row of medals on the left side of his chest. There are gilded cords known as aiguillette with gold metal tagged points draped across his right shoulder. Producers of products with the royal warrant will no doubt be unveiling their coronation specials very soon. A royal warrant of appointment is granted as a mark of recognition to people or companies who've regularly supplied goods or services to Her Majesty the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, and with the Prince of Wales as he was then, but now to King Charles III. We don't know yet, and probably won't know until the day, which of his many uniforms the king will wear for the coronation. Unlike his mother, though, who wore the George IV diadem, he will not be wearing a crown until he's crowned king. We'll talk about ceremonial dress in another edition of Countdown to the Coronation. If you'd like to hear more, please click on the link on YouTube. Thank you for listening.